Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Snake Doc here, and today what we have on the bench in front of us is a Turkish pistol roundup. So these are all duty size pistols, if you will, and they're all made in Turkey, and they're all different manufacturers. So we have Sarsalmaz, we have Tsas, and we have Janik or Kanik, however you want to say it. Um, so let's, we're just going to kind of compare them, contrast them, throw them on the scale, talk about some modifications, talk about just some overall function and what you can expect from them. So let's work left to right. And what we have here is my SAR-9. Let's bring that up. There you can see this is the SAR-9. Now this has had some modifications done to it, obviously. We have it milled out here for an RMR. And I have my sights removed right now. Uh, my front sight is off of it. And then it has a titanium blue Cerakote job on it. And then it also has the manual safety uh, elimination pin here, which uh, you can uh, message me and I can tell you how to get one of those. Uh, what this has is 17 round magazine. So there we go, 17 round mags. These are a P320 body. Um, the notch is cut in a different spot than the P320, but it's the same body for the full-size P320, not the compact. Magazine release is reversible. Grip is very reminiscent of the H&K VP9 or the P30 series. Replaceable side straps as well as the back strap. Uh, this internally functions identical to a Glock. It is um, the cruciform connector and the trigger assist spring layout, which is identical to the Glock. Actual Picatinny rail up front, which is nice. You have three available slots on that. Some jimping on the front of the trigger guard. When the gun, these are all safety checked, by the way. So let's go ahead and show that we are clear. You saw an empty magazine already. We're going to send the slide home. And what you have here is a trigger ready indicator here by a, a red piece of plastic that is formed into the plastic Glock style trigger where it has the trigger safety built into it. Comes factory uh, in versions like this, which would be considered the SAR-9T tactical for having uh, no manual safety. And then the standard SAR-9 has a ambidextrous manual safety, which is the only ambidextrous control on it. However, you can reverse the magazine catch as evident by slot cuts on both sides of the magazine. Has um, finger relief right here so you can get the sides of the base plate if there's a malfunction, which if you watch my videos you know that I have had a couple malfunctions since I've had this uh, milled for an optic. Um, Really nice magazine construction. I, it doesn't say these are Metgars, um, but I'm going to assume that they are because uh, the other SAR pistols use Metgar magazines. Uh, this also has um, the extractor is held in with this roll pin, which is different than the Glock, um, which is held in with a plunger rod uh, onto the uh, back plate of the slide. So what you have on this though is when a round is chambered, your extractor will pop out and you can see there's some red paint on it right there. I don't know if it's showing up, but there's some there. Take my word for it. So takedown is going to be just like a Glock, the same way. You have to pull the trigger. So you can either do it before or after, but pull the trigger, retract the slide, pull down on the tabs and push the slide off. And there you can see our internals. I didn't even drop the mag. Um, and I was able to remove the slide. Looks like I have a little chunk of brass right here. Um, so here you can see the slide arrangement. I show this in another video where I compare this to a Glock 17. They're basically identical slides. Um, striker, striker block, pickup rail. And then this has the, uh, the, the two-piece um, double recoil spring assembly on there. So very nice gun, very uh, ergonomic, no question about it. And it uh, 
It's very well built. It has a nice recessed crown. And uh, there you can see it. it. has a really nice crown on it. The factory sights on this, and uh, somebody just told me in another video, if you have one of these that has that was um, Opelika, Alabama, I believe it is, as uh, the SAR Arms USA import place, the sights are phosphorescent, so you just shine them with your LED flashlight or your uh, weapon light, and they glow for a little while. Um, they are steel front and rear. Um, and they are a Glock configuration where um, it is held in by a um, hex screw from the underside on the front and the rear is dovetailed. Um, but the rear dovetail supposedly is a Smith & Wesson m and I have not confirmed that. So Glock front sight works though. If you watch my video, I had put a fiber optic for a Glock on the front. I took it off when I had it Cerakoted and I just did not put a sight back on because I was using the RMR. So, um, all right, so let's move on to the next one. Oh, let's talk about real quick um, trigger pull on this. Trigger pull is decent on this. You can expect it to be like a Glock. It's, it's very, like I said, internally it's identical to a Glock. Um, you could probably use a Glock connector. I don't know, I haven't tried it. Um, but the same procedure that you would use to make a Glock trigger feel smoother is the same procedure that you can use on this pistol, which I have done. So basically you're going to hit have take up. Once you get rid of the take up, you are at a very distinct wall, a slight press beyond that, and you get a nice break. Reset is going to be short, audible, and very, very tactile. And there's your break again. So, really nice gun. Um, I, I really, really like um, the overall feel of it. It's amazing. I mean, HK nailed the grip, so they, they've copied that. They copied a winner. Um, the other thing that this has is extremely low bore access, like a Glock does. So, um, it's, it's a really soft shooter. Let's move on to the Canic, as I will call it. Um, this is the TP9SF version. I've done lots of videos on Canic pistols. I've owned lots of them. TP9, I've owned two TP9SAs, a uh, the original Canic TP9. Um, what else have I had? An Elite SF Elite. Um, so I've had quite a few of them. And the number one thing that you can say about them, ergonomically, they're very nice. This one, I, if you watch my other videos, I just put this traction grip on there, traction, www.tractiongrips.com for these. These are under $12, and they make a big difference. Um, this has one replaceable back strap, so it comes with this one, and then there's one that has a little bit more of an enhanced hump, and uh, that one is uh, what comes in the kit. This one happens to have a fiber optic front, and a Warren tactical rear on it. These are coming with Warren sights. Not all of them come with a fiber optic. Some of them just come with a white dot front sight. Takedown identical. Um, it's going to be pull the trigger, retract the, retract the uh, takedown levers, and you can push your slide off. This one I have the magazine in there, so I got to take that out. But like I said, all these were safety checked before we even came to the bench to start making this video. So internally, you can see it is typical striker fired orientation where we have a striker block right here. We have a pickup rail right here with a little bit of brass remnant on it and our striker assembly itself. However, what we have on this is the striker assembly will come back and show you when it is cocked. Um, and then internally here, it is exact to a Walther PPQ. So what you have here is a basically a single action striker fired gun. Um, this spring right here is uh, resistance for the trigger. And then these uh, are the bars that will take care of your uh, striker block. So to put the top end back on and the guns back together. Again, three slot true 1913 Picatinny rail. A very very nice barrel on here again uh, this is like 4.49 I believe inches so it's 
similar in size to the Glock 17. Again, if you watch my videos, I, I would encourage you to go back and look at the video where I compare the SF Elite to the Glock 17 that I cut to a Glock 19 length. The Glock 17 slide and the TP9 SF Elite slide are identical in length. So, it is not a G19 size gun other than the grip length. So, just keep that in mind um, if you're looking for something for ultra concealment. This one is basically just as concealable. Comes with 18 round magazines. There you can see 18. And these are Metgar. Metgar manufactured for Canic TP series. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> Loaded chamber indicator pops up right here. Doesn't pop up super high. But it is a tactile indicator and as well as visual to show you that you do have a round in the chamber, which we do not. Trigger on these is fantastic, out of this world, tremendous, stupendous. Um, really nice trigger shape. I don't have any problems. I've heard of some other people that were like with small hands that were having a hard time like getting all the way to the trigger blade and they were like stopping. The, the trigger from uh, activating because the blade was blocking it. Um, not a problem for me. Never has been a problem on any one of the series. Um, tremendous trigger though. Tremendous. So really take up distinct wall break and the shortest reset I've ever seen on a striker fired gun. I can't imagine how you could get it any shorter than that. Um, <clears throat> Really light break. <coughs> One difference I will say, this is a, um, again, you can reverse the magazine release. And this is metal and it's checkered. Uh, the one thing I wanted to show you on the SAR that's an advantage over the Glock is that it has a really thick um, slide release lever or a slide stop if you want to call it that. This one is more like the Glock Gen 3s and stuff where it's uh, the small just bent over piece of metal. However, they did texture it in a couple spots there. And it can be used. So you see, it can be used. It definitely can be used. Um, but it is very low profile. Bore axis is going to be somewhat taller. There you can see. So basically all this extra stuff up here is going to um, make the bore axis seem higher, but really it's not. I mean, the, the gun is still very, very, very low bore axis. If you look at it this way, there you can see. So a lot of people, uh, it's much ado about nothing, if you will. So great gun, great shooter. Um, dead nuts reliable. Like I've never had an issue with a Canic firearm. Um, I think if you watch torture tests that have been done by other people, they excel in that area. Um, the barrels are built to last. The gun is just very, very well designed. And they've created quite a following for themselves here in America. Let's move on to the TSOS. And I happen to have a TLR3 mounted on mine right now because this is on nightstand duty for me. And the reason I have it on nightstand duty is a couple reasons. Um, one, the light works perfectly on there. I like where it falls. I can actuate the light with my trigger finger. And, uh, you know, it's it's just, it it's really well laid out. Two, um, I use my XD9 a, a lot. Um, I use it in my classes when I'm uh, presenting material. I use it as my instructor gun when I'm instructing in my USCCA courses. Um, and this is basically a clone of that, but it does not have the grip safety and an advantage. In addition, it has a manual safety. So being a nightstand side table gun, I do have kids. Um, I like having the extra manual safety on there. A lot of people hate it on a striker fired gun, but to me, um, it's something that I've trained for and something that I know I'm going to use. And it's something that I know when I set that pistol where I keep it, um, it's, it's in a safe condition. So again, 
This one also has a striker indicator that will disappear when we fire it. I can go ahead and show that the weapon is safe again. This one uses uh, Metgar again, Metgar mags here, and it actually is um, SIG P226 mags. This is an 18 round mag. Uh, there you can see we have 18 rounds. These did also ship with 15 round mags. Here's a uh, P226 mag. 357 40 caliber and you can see it fits right in and locks in and falls free and does all the stuff that it's supposed to do so um the other modification or not modification but upgrade that i did to this is i got rid of the factory target sights which were all black with an adjustable rear and i got these fiber optic sights which are for a, a smith and wesson m and p so this slide is milled for a Smith & Wesson M&P size sight. I have red rear and a green front, which is opposite of what I usually run. I usually have a red front and green rear, um, or just a blacked out rear, but that's the way these came and I'm actually fine with it. Um, again, we have a little bump on the extractor here, which when there's a round chambered, it pushes out and then it becomes tactile. There isn't, not that I can see any paint on there or anything, um, but you know, you can do your press check. This has forward cocking serrations on it, so it's really easy to do press check on it. The SAR 9 also has front cocking serrations. The Canic does not, but what it does have is this ledge right here. So if you keep your hands away from the muzzle, you can still retract here and you can look and see if there's a round there. Um, pop the mag back in here real quick and show you this does not have a trigger safety So it is just a nice very very well contoured and smooth trigger face um, The manual safety is your option for that so it kills the trigger and locks the slide So when you flick that down, then you can manipulate the slide it has a really really nice pronounced slide release here so you can release that send it home and the trigger is good so there's your brake. Reset is slightly longer than the other two guns um, and slightly, not mushier, but not quite as firm. Um, it's, it's audible, but it's not super firm. But this gun shoots very accurately and very comfortably. Again, traction grip on here, www.tractiongrips.com, check them out. And then um, it comes with three back straps. This is the one that came on, it's a medium. And the Porsche uh, normally comes with like rows right here. Looks like hand grenade stuff. I sanded all that off with the Dremel and then um, stipple textured that with a soldering iron. And to me, it just feels outstanding in the hand. It's a really, really good, comfortable grip. If I had to rate them, I would probably go, obviously this one is going to be number one just because there's so much that you can do to it to make it fit ideally for you. Um, these are, ugh, it's a toss up. I, okay, here's what I'll say about it. The canic comes down and then it tapers in right here. So you can see my fingers are falling into a depression. So it's very tapered right here. And then it's just, you know, it's like rounded around the front, nice flat sides and, you know, nice, nice uh, filling grip right here. What I like better about that is that when this one comes down, this is really wide and flat right here. I don't know if that's going to show up, but like... It's wide and flat, so it pushes right here a little bit. Whereas on the Canic, it's relieved there, so this kind of fill, falls into that slot and locks you in a little bit better. So actually, I will say that this is third, but by no stretch of the imagination is this not a comfortable pistol. This is tremendously ergonomic. Um, it's just going to be up to you to decide how you want to go about with the back strap on it. There's small, medium, large. Um, it's very similar to the uh, XDM in the fact that it's way down the grip where it actually does the stuff. 
Whereas if you look at on here, this comes way up almost to the tang. Um, this one's way down from there. It's, it, you know, it's significantly lower on the grip frame. So, uh, again, it's an XD9 clone, basically, internally is going to be very, very similar to the XD9. Takedown is going to be very, very similar, so you're going to lock the slide back on the mag, dump the mag, check for clear. Flip the takedown lever down in this case. On the XDs, they come up into the slide, and then you can just send the uh, slide home. You are going to have to pull the trigger here once you have it in battery, and then your top end will pull off. And again dual recoil spring setup, which is the same as the SAR, different than the Canic. Uh, striker block and a striker with the nice wide pickup rail on there. Uh, all metal construction there. Super long front rails on there and the polymer rear rails just like on the XD. So fully cocked striker on this one. Um, there you can see the striker indicator is there and then when you pull the trigger, it's gone. And I didn't flip my takedown lever back up, so it wanted to throw the slide off again. So there's that. Now everything's good on that. Mag's back in there. Um, I just really like how the light is on there. It's almost the same as uh, the end of the muzzle. So let's just compare them side by side now, size-wise, so you can get an idea. This is a 4-inch barrel and uh, short slide so this is like uh, the XD size so it's going to be smaller than your your TP9 SF there you can see it's at least a half inch shorter um, but grip length it's longer so this is 18 rounds to 18 rounds um, but uh, it's just the design of the grip is a little bit longer this definitely feels because of that this feels bigger than my XD9 um, but it, it's a, it's a really nice size gun. Let's look at bore axis on this because a lot of people also freak out about oh, sky high bore axis on a, um, Springfield XD9, which is simply not true. It's just the way that they milled the slide that gives you that illusion. So there you can see when you put the slide side by side, you're basically dealing with the same thing. And then if we look at it from the rear um, if we line up tang to tang, they're basically, you can see that the striker is actually higher on the canic. So that means that there would be a lower bore on the XD, if you will, or the PX9 Zagana. So when we compare that to the SAR, the SAR is going to be slightly lower. But if you look at, again, focus on that red dot of the striker. It's still just, it's very, very slight, about an eighth of an inch difference there. So let's look at the slide length difference here. Your SAR is going to be longer, but then when you line up the uh, tangs here, the grip is slightly longer again on the PX9. And again on the Canic, but you're getting an extra round in both of these pistols. This one is 17 plus one. So let's put them on the scale real quick. I know this one's not going to be 100% accurate because there was some milling done to the slide, but it is what it is. All right, we are in ounces. Everything's unloaded. I'm leaving the mags in. 28.11. I should probably take the light off on this one. But let's see. Bear with me. Okay, lights off. This one feels the heaviest. 30.02. This one feels the lightest. Yep, 26.56. So 26 and a half, 28, just over 28, and this one was right at 30. 30 ounces. But this one I would say. Um, everything up here just feels more substantial on it, so I'm guessing most of your weight is going to come from up there. Internally or in frame-wise, they're not a whole lot different. Um, metal, metal mag release button on all of these, which is nice, and an upgrade over a lot of their American counterparts, or Austrian, if you will. 
Um, so there we go. Hopefully that solves some questions for you guys. All three of these are fantastic guns. Obviously, I trust my life to this one <clears throat> if I'm using it as a bedside table uh, for things that go bump in the night kind of weapon, pistol. And then, uh, you know, I love these. These are just, <laughs> there's not a better value available than a canic firearm. There's just not, I don't know, you know, people say what they will about Turkish um, foreign policy and whatever relations, um, but again the money's going to the importer who's already brought these pistols here to the u.s so you're helping an american company in this case century arms in this case sar usa used to be uh like eaa and uh sds i think had them for a while um and then in this case it's uh sds sds out of knoxville tennessee right there so, there you go. There's all three of them again. SAR, TSAS, Canik. Turkish pistols, great values. They're all going to be cheaper than the U.S. counterparts. Awesome Italian-made Metgar magazines in it. Really nice sights on them. Tremendous ergonomics. Great trigger feel. Check them out. Thanks for watching. You guys always shoot safe.